Johnny, cut it out. Tony. Tony, I know you can get fresh. Come on over here. Wait for me in the car, Joe. All right, Jimmy. Go ahead, you tell me. Well, Sergeant Donovan, I don't like to blow whistle on a pal. A pal yet? Well, you started it. Look, you started it. You slapped me on the shoulder. This is a friendly tap. I don't know what you got so excited I about. don't like that kind of friendship. I don't like to be hit from behind by anybody, any time. I don't like to be touched. Okay, okay. The way you jumped me, you think I tossed a brick at you. Right off, he challenges me. And I tried to kibitz him out of it. I'm beginning to get the picture. Yeah, and I even told him I was sorry. That's right. I apologized. You can ask any of the guys. Didn't that satisfy him? No, he wanted to fight. I know I'm bigger than he is. But he wanted to fight. Look, what are you, the referee or in his corner? No, Tony, I'm really in your corner. If I can just get you to see it. Well, I guess you can pick up your marbles. I'll try to low-key this in the report. But what your principal wants to do, well, that's her business. Now, wait a minute. Before you go, I want to see you two fellas shake hands. Come on, come on. It'll look better in the report. Sure, a happy ending, huh? I'm sorry, Tony. <laughs> I guess I lost my head. I burn easy. You no, know, Tony, you really ought to smile more often. Sure. Win friends and charm snakes, huh? That's just what I wanted to talk to you about. You're suspicious of everybody. You act like the whole world's your enemy the way you flare up. Oh, uh, people bug me. That's right. Hide behind jive talk. People bug you. Well, people bug me too. But I don't go around clouding everybody. Come on, finish your beef, will you? All I know is you've been in trouble a half a dozen times. You don't have any official record yet, but you're sure working up to one. What, you got a crystal ball, huh? I pulled you out of fights three times myself in the last month. You're just lucky there weren't any formal complaints. The time before this, in the supermarket. It was the checker's mistake. Yeah, but you didn't even give him a chance to rectify it. Boom, you throw a carton of milk right at him. Look, Tony. I'm just trying to tell you that you need help. What kind of help? Well, there's a prominent doctor, Dr. Brandon. He's a consulting psychologist out of the aircraft plant. He's been working with the police department without charge, trying to help difficult kids adjust. What's this adjust kick? Polish off the rough edges. Adjust. Adjust to what? To everything. Teachers, parents, other students. You know, some kids have a tougher time than others, and it's not necessarily their fault. Now, this Dr. Brandon, well, he's modern. He uses hypnosis. Oh, no. No! No head shrinker for me, thank you. You know, that's all I need. That's all I need. Tony the Flip. No, sir, thank you. You keep the man in the white coat for the goofs. 
I can take care of myself. The way you have up to now? The way I have. Then you won't let anybody help you. Not into a straitjacket, I won't. Look, uh, you hold me on any charge? No. Then I can go. Yeah, yeah, you can go. But this is the last warning, Tony. If you get into trouble again, don't expect it to be a breeze like this. I can't let you off. Okay. I heard you. Is everything all right, Tony? Sure it is. What did Officer Donovan say? I don't want to talk about it. I've had enough yakety yak to last me till the end of the term. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, Arlene. I say things, I do things, I, I don't know why. I try to control them, it's too late. I've, I've gone too far. I don't know. I, I, I get a certain feeling and I have to... I don't know. I just don't know. Tony, you must try. Yeah, I'll try. But not Donovan's way. What's his way? He wants me to go to this, this head shrinker, Dr. Brandon. Like, like I was a flip or something. Is that the way he said it? No, he, he sprinkled a little sugar on it. But I'm not having any, thank you. Oh, Tony. Okay. Okay, I'll try. But my way. Come on, I'll take you home. it today. What's the difference? Your principal called, said it was your fault. Why does she bother you? Because I'm your father. She said I'm supposed to discipline you. I told her at home you never needed discipline, not even when your mother was alive. I don't know why she has to drag you into it. Look, boy, you missed the point. Well, if you know, tell me. Sometimes you just have to do things the way people want them done. That makes them happy and they leave you alone. I used to have a foreman like that. Every time I assembled a motor my way, he beefed. Uh, but when I assembled it... Dad, I don't like to be pushed around! Tony, sometimes you just have to do it the other fellow's way. Well, I gotta be going. Sorry I can't eat with you. Night shift again. Oh, there are a couple of lamb chops in the icebox. I seasoned them the way you like. Just set them in the pan. Dad, I can cook a chop. And be sure you cook them. Don't eat them raw like you did the hamburger yesterday. Tony, think over what I said, would you? I mean about not being so stubborn. Just might make things a lot easier all around. Okay, Dad. not even late. Maybe you're beginning to train him. That's no way to call for a date. When I courted your mother, we... Things were different then. Well, I still want my daughter treated with respect. Your father's right, Arlene. Listen to him. Oh, Dad, it's got nothing to do with respect. That's the way all the kids do it. But I still can't understand why you only date him. Oh, not that I have anything specific against Tony. But there's Steve Harmon, the druggist's son, and there's Willie Blake... Oh, love, and Mother. I date Tony because I like him. In fact, 
I like him a lot. And you just ask him to come in, Arlene. Go ahead. We won't bite him. Oh, all right. Tony, would you come in for a minute? Hi. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Tony, I like things formal once in a while. We just wanted to look at you before you take our daughter out to a party. You don't have any objections? No, I don't. Well, then why don't you call for her properly in her home? Now, Dad. No, no, no. A little man-to-man -man talk won't hurt anybody. Well, I would, only you don't look too pleased. No, really, you know, sometimes when I walk in that door, I think you're going to swat me with a baseball bat or something. Oh, I'm sure that's just your imagination. It must be. Unless you feel guilty about something. Now, Dad, you promised. It's the same. Parents of a young girl, and especially a pretty one like Arlene, like to feel proud of the young man that takes her out. A young man who keeps busy with the right kind of things. Like sprinkle a lawn, take out a paper route, haul boxes in the market. Where's the opener, Mary? On the sink, dear. Any job that keeps a teenager out of mischief and builds a good reputation. Oh, yeah, like, like our bank cashier. You know the one that's missing? The guy that ran off and lost it all at the track. Now, being a smart aleck won't do it. You've got a bow to authority. Everybody's on my back today. Oh, Daddy, it's Halloween, and will we have to go? Yes, we don't want them to miss any fun. Okay, okay, I've said my piece. On one thing you can be sure of, Mr. Logan. At least I'll protect your daughter. All right, kids, have a good time. Remember now, I want you home by 12. No excuses now. 12. You heard what Dad said. Not after midnight. into your dad. You heard about the fight. So it's over. But I heard more. More? Now, Tony, don't flare up. And please let me say it through once. I, I asked about this Dr. Brandon. Now, if he could really help you, it would be wonderful for both of us. And it would make things easier both at school and here at home. Don't forget about the four years of waiting. College and all. Please, Tony. Arlene, get this straight and get it final. I'm not going to any doctor like Dr. Brandon. Not even if you have to? But I don't have to. Now, come on. Forget it. on to Frank. He's got no date. But I came with you. Look, how square can you get? You came with me, so you dance with him. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'll clarify it for you. Hey, Frank. You want me? Be my guest. This sure beats the youth center. Supervised entertainment, eight to ten. Square dances and waltzes, and a cigarette is a crime. Oh. Scooby-Doo. Well. Oh, 
what did I do? What did I do? Either too much or too little. You know, I thought this was going to be a costume party. <laughs> Boy, this pad sure is crazy. And don't forget, it was Tony who found it and got permission to use it. But is it really haunted? Boo! Oh! Stop scaring me! Is this a haunted house? Do I have to call all the signals for you? Well, you don't have to scare me to death. Sometimes I wonder why I date you. Because you dig me and I dig you. No, Vic. Sometimes I don't understand you at all. The understatement of the year. Hear this, hear this. Vic's gonna sing this new crazy record for us right now. My anymore. I want a gal with a lot of dough. When I find her, we're gonna swing up to the preacher with a wedding ring. Tell me where she is, cause I don't know. So, eeny, meeny, my anymore. I've been looking all over town, but so far she ain't been around. Someday I'll meet her and then I'll say, Shoot, bitty, baby, baby, we're on our way. Hurry up now and follow me, but don't forget to bring your do-re-me. sad or blue you just call me baby and i'll run to you but if you ever leave me you're gonna pay fifty dollar dollar money every day so i'll be yours from this day on but only till your money's gone rich girls sure are hard to find but i'll keep a look until i lose my mind she's bound to show up eventually then i'll be rolling in security but where she's hiding, I don't know. So eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. We got a nice present for Vic in that closet. Do you know he's always the life of the party and he knocks himself out to entertain us? Well, the kids got together to get him this present. Go on, you give it to him. You're his girl. Oh, I'd be glad to. <laughs> Some joke. Maybe you think it's funny, but I don't. And anyway, why does everybody pick on me? You're right, baby. And from now on, anybody picks on you is going to have to fight me. Now, for that, I'll collect a kiss in advance. <laughs> oh, Tony, I bet you had a lot to do with all this. Me? Yes, you. And I bet you're not so innocent, either. Now, why do they always pick on us? It isn't fair. I'll say it isn't. Just when I was going to give her a nice present. That's women for you, no appreciation. What present? This one. Oh, oh, is that now? Gee, what it is. I don't know. Oh, Candy! Oh, 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 Can you play the big drums like you do the bongos? Just lead me to them. Can I play the big drums better than the bongos? Great, man. They're in there. Yeah? And give me a real long blast, will you? Sure, great, sure. Great, great. I believe in sharing. <laughs> All right. 
right now. Okay, let's have some food, okay? <laughs> Come on, gang, let's eat. Yeah, at least there's no gags in the food. This party's really percolating. I've never had so much fun. Here, here. Oh, thank you. Oh. 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 Everything normal, my boy. Physical examination is a formality, but a necessary one. Before we enter the mind, we must know the condition of the body. Tony, you're a perfectly normal human being. There's no reason in the world why you can't have a full, wonderful life. If... Yeah, if. If I adjust, and I? It's the if we're going to work on, son. We'll work on it together. Okay, Tony? You're the doctor. That's why I'm here. No, I don't, Dr. Wagner. Tony, will you just sit down over here? Thank you. What is it? Just a mild sedative. It, uh, it won't make me dopey or anything, will it? I have to drive home. No, it's simply to relax you. I'll drink it down. I'll be back in a minute. Hugo, prepare the scopolamine. What are you doing? I'm going to mix the serum with the scopolamine. But Alfred, do you realize the possible consequences? I realize one thing, that at last, after years of searching, I found a suitable person for my experiment. His record at school, what the school principal told me, and what I learned from Detective Sergeant Donovan, gives him the proper, disturbed, emotional background I need. And with what I found out from the physical examination, this boy is my perfect subject. There were certain telltale marks in his body only I would recognize. But you know what might happen. Might. In science, one must be sure. I'm going to take this out of the realm of possibilities, into the world of exact science. If I'm successful, then I can be certain. But you're sacrificing a human life. Do you cry over a guinea pig? This boy's a free police case. We're probably saving him from the gas chamber. The boy is so young and the transformation horrible. You call yourself a scientist. That's why you've never been more than an assistant. But if you interfere, if you say one word... No, 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 Alfred. You can trust me. Yes, I know that. You've been more than an assistant on other occasions. Accomplice would be a better word. What is the plan? Through hypnosis, I'm going to regress this boy back. Back into the primitive past that lurks within him. I'm going to transform him and unleash the savage instincts that lie hidden within. And then? Then I'll be judged a benefactor. Mankind is on the verge of destroying itself. The only hope for the human race is to hurl it back into its primitive dawn, to start all over again. What's one life compared to such a triumph? You'll only feel a scratch, believe me. And this makes the hypnosis more comfortable and prepares the way for analysis. Now remember, I don't want to be disturbed. Tony, you must think of this as a trip, a sort of voyage of discovery. On the way, we'll find out many fascinating things about you. And in the end, 
You will no longer be disturbed or troubled because you will be you. You've placed yourself in my hands. I'm the pilot, you the passenger. But instead of going forward into space, we're going backwards in time. Begin at 100 and count backwards. We'll start together. 100. 100. 99. 99. 98. 98. 73. 73. 72. Quickly, tell me, where are you? I'm on the beach. How old are you? About 12, I think. Go on. I'm playing with some kids. One of the older, older boys tries to take away one of our toys. He grabs it and runs away. And what do you do? I run after him. I jump him. I scratch him, choke him. He's older than I am, but, but he begins to cry. Some, some people gather around us and, and I... That'll be all for today. You may wake up. Wake up! You okay, Tony? I'll see you day after tomorrow at the same time. Don't worry, my boy. Soon you'll be yourself, your true self. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Remember how it felt to run over the hills in the moonlight? To hide by the stream, to wait in silence until... No, no. Remember how wonderful it was when you sprang suddenly, dug in with your fangs, a soft throat, the gush of warm blood? No, no! Yes, I want you to remember. You must remember. You know, Vic, you're good enough to sign up with a band. He had lots of offers. Oh, get off my back, will you? Isn't that what you told me? Tony, you can tell me to shut up if you want. But you're not with it tonight. No, I'm not. Like you're not yourself. Yes, I'm not myself. I think I'll take Arlene home. Come on, honey, let's get out. That's right. I promised your folks I'd have you home by midnight. You listen home, Frank? And it's here with you, lovebirds? No, thanks. Everybody else is paired up. How are you going to get home? How will I get home? I'll get home on my feet. I'll walk. I'll take that shortcut through the woods. Brings me right out by the power works. Why don't you two join us at Ruby's drive-in? No, we're going right home. Go on, Tony. We'll lock up. Oh, so you've joined the exclusive set. No, you just talk too much, that's all. I'm for peace and quiet. Oh, come on, Tony, let's go.
Good night, Arlene. See you tomorrow, Tony. Don't forget math. First thing in the morning, early. Sure, I'll sack in right away. Hello? Who's there? Special pictures? Yes, Chief. Strange. Who found the body? Hart Logan, the auditor out at the power works. Takes that shortcut through the woods every morning. Says the only exercise he gets. Mm-hmm. Any idea how long the boy's been dead? No, maybe the PM will show. The coroner has the body. That's strange. A slice on each side of his throat. Got any ideas? No. Boy had no enemies. There weren't any gang fights in Rockdale. Plenty bruises, scratches on his face, clothing ripped off? No. Well, then how was the boy killed? You got any theories? Not a shiv. Not hands. Teeth? Fangs. Fangs? <laughs> There's no wild animals around here. I've walked these woods since I was knee-high to a duck. I've never seen anything wilder than a tomcat. I know. That's what makes it so hard to believe. But I still say fangs. Maybe if the boy had a chance to fight, his fingernails will show something. Let's hope so. In the meantime, let's keep the lid clamped down on this until the official reports come through. Maybe even after that. Whatever it is, we've got to be sure. I told Art Logan not to say a word. Good. Keep these locked now files. Yes, Chief. Just one rumor about fangs in the newspapers will have a field day. 
Not just the local papers, but reporters from all over the country will have on-the-spot coverage, photographers. They'll have a field day, all right. But here in Rockdale, we'll have a panic. Yeah, I know. But I'm more worried about the teenagers at the school. And check the surrounding town. See if a carnival, a circus, or a county fair has been setting up their tents. Also, see if anybody has a private menagerie. Maybe a big cat got loose some way. If I were you, I'd talk to the farmers in the surrounding areas. Sometimes they keep a wild dog for protection. Mm. Whatever it is, we've got to be sure. Facts first. And don't encourage any rumors. Right. Well, now I've got to go and see the mayor. Hi, Pepe. I'm going down to the lab. Better get those pictures locked up in the file. Pepe, how are you? Oh, Chris, uh, do you mind if I take a look at that picture? You know the boy? Once in a while, I played pinochle with his father. Very small stakes. Uh, yes, I knew the boy, but perhaps uh, I have a better reason. Let me see the picture. You're not to say anything about this to anyone, understand? It's going on 12 years that I'm working here. Have I ever said a word? What's the matter? You see something we missed? The poor boy. Poor boy. Peppy, I don't blame you for being upset. Imagine how his family feels. I know what killed him. You do? He was killed by... by a werewolf. A what? In the old country, in my little village, in the Carpathian Mountains, there was a story passed on from generation to generation. Some say it was a legend, but I know it was the truth. I'll tell you what werewolf is. It's a human being possessed by a wolf. When the evil eye is on you, the savage beast somehow gets inside and controls you, makes you look and act like a wolf, makes you hunt down your victim and kill it like a wolf. Yes, kill you with fangs, like a wolf. Why, you're crazy. You better not let anyone hear you talk like that, Pepe. You'll wind up in a booby hatch. Werewolf, come on. Yes, that's what I said the first time it was told to me. But later, what I saw, what I heard, convinced me. I'm going to put these away and lock the fire. You just forget I never showed them to you. Yes, I'll be glad to forget this, if I can. Oh, how awful. Poor Frank. Well, hello, Tony, my boy. Come on in. You're a little early, but welcome. Thanks, Dr. Brannon. I... Well, the reason I came early is... You don't have to tell me why. Let me be the one to interpret the symptoms. After all, you have placed yourself in my hands, so to speak. Tony, punctuality is a phase of adjustment. Sometimes the patient leans backward to be prompt, comes even before his appointment. Now, is that clear? No, doctor, that's not why I'm here. I wanted to tell you about something... Now, I... you don't have to tell me now. I'll hear it all under hypnosis. I'll get the injection ready. Is the scopolamine ready? Yes. Alfred, you read the paper. You know what happened. There's a difference between a newspaper story and a scientific report. I have to be sure. Even in a minor experiment. You know how many guinea pigs are used up before the trailblazer is ready to announce a new discovery to the scientific world? Surely you know how skeptical scientists are. Indeed, have to be. But you realize the consequences. I realize that I have an old woman for an assistant. If you mean I have a heart, I don't consider that an insult. I mean that you're standing in the way of progress. Progress? 
Do you call it progress to hurl back the human race to its savage beginnings? It may prove to be the only road to progress. Go ahead, my boy. Dr. Brandon, the, there's something I have to tell you. I, I, I don't know if it really happened. It's more like a nightmare. I, I, now, I, Tony, very often in psychotherapy, strange things seem to happen. Sometimes when we light up the dark corner of the human mind... Doctor! Doctor, please help me. And do exactly as I say. All I can tell you is that your progress is excellent. I've even told the principal of your school that. Yes, I'm extremely pleased with the progress you've been making. And soon, Tony, very soon, you'll be your true self again. Now, this is a map of the area. We'll start with the abandoned house. Teenagers call it the haunted house. You question them? Yeah, just informally. They had a party after a football game and went home. They all drove except Frank, who walked through the woods. How about his parents? His mother's in a state of shock. His father wants to know just one thing. What are the police doing about this? Yeah, that's it. They'll all be down on us unless we find the killer. Chief Baker. Yeah. Donovan. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Picked up a couple of vagrants out of the freight yard. Well, go ahead. I'll be right in. Well, I checked the neighboring towns. There aren't any circuses, carnivals, or county fairs. If they come at all, they come in the spring. How about the farms? I checked those, too. They mostly truck, very little livestock, a few pigs penned up, some horses. There's a mink farm about three miles north of here. But they're all baby mink. First thing they do is cut off their teeth. Oh, no. no that's not good. Well, everything seems to lead to a dead end. Oh, very good, Teresa. Your form is improving. Thank you, Miss Dolphin. But I must repeat, we're judged on points, and Linwood High has won the gymnastic events three years in a row. Oh, I certainly hope we win this time. So do I. Have you had enough for today? I've got to go. Oh, gee, I'd like to practice for about another half hour. Well, you don't need me. Just remember the other pointers I gave you. I've got some shopping to do. You go right ahead. Anyway, you make me very self-conscious, breathing down my neck all the time and picking on all my mistakes. I just want to try it a few more times. That's the spirit. Good night. Will you come in, Tony? I hope you didn't mind waiting. I had some reports to finish. Well, uh, you wanted to see me? Yes, I wanted to have a little chat with you. And for heaven's sakes, Tony, don't look so glum or so suspicious. For once, we meet on a friendlier basis. No, you're not going to chew me out, then. As you say, I'm not going to chew you out. Sit down, Tony. Thank you. I have a report here from Dr. Brandon. Naturally, all this is kept strictly confidential. It's a report of progress, which I'm happy to confirm. You mean he says I'm adjusting? Very much so. Your grades are about the same, but then your grades were always high. However, your conduct is very much improved. Tony, you're coming along just fine. Thanks, I'm glad. And as a reward, I want you to know that if you continue this way, you'll earn an honor certificate. Yes, Tony? I'll recommend you to the State College. Your grades will be high and your deportment will match. This means so much to me, Miss Ferguson. So far, every pupil I've recommended has reflected great credit on Rockdale High. And I know you will. So keep it up till graduation. Then you'll be off to your real career. Thanks a lot. I always knew that if somehow we could just break through to you, I mean really get inside of you, you'd be a credit to your father and to your school. Thank you. You're welcome. Dismissed.
Did you see him? Yes, I saw. Did you recognize him? I'll call the police. I'll call the police! Ferguson, I, I know this is difficult, but anything you can do to help us. He... It came running out of the gymnasium. I recognized the jacket, the trousers. They were the same? The same. The eyes, the hands like claws. I never saw anything like it before. But you recognized him. It was Tony, all right. It was his jacket. Anybody chase him? No, it all happened too fast. Besides, we were paralyzed, man, just too paralyzed. And then he disappeared? Yeah, like an animal. They jumped the fence and ran to the fields. been blocked off. At all points Bulletin has gone out, there's no way he can possibly escape. He? Well, he, yet. Call it what you will. Seems to me Werewolf would be more appropriate. Very well, then. I realize it makes a better story. Werewolf. In the meantime, what protection are you giving the people, uh, especially the teenagers? The very best we possibly can. Parents have been warned to keep their children at home. Theaters, recreation halls, bowling alleys have all been shut down. What about the werewolf? Posse's been formed. They're going to start right away. But in the meantime, the werewolf is at large. But not for long. You hope. You'll find this is different than tracking down the ordinary criminal. You're dealing with the cunning, the ruthlessness of something that is supernatural. Oh, come now. Let's don't add to the panic that already exists. The people are entitled to know everything, and my paper's going to see that they get it. Maybe if you hadn't kept the first murder so secret. Don't try to place the blame for this. We did everything that was reasonable, in the interest of public protection and safety. All right. May we see the official pictures? No, they're locked in our files. You can't keep this a secret, Chief. The second murder has blown the lid off. A TV truck is on its way out right now. Teenagers are going to be interviewed. Parents, teachers. A psychologist was involved too, wasn't he? You can't pry into that. Just what are you trying to do, Ed? Do the grief of the families already involved? Don't make this a personal issue, Chief Baker. You have your work cut out, we have ours. In that case, gentlemen, you'll understand that we're very busy. Well, there's one thing you can be sure of. We'll be with you every step of the hunt from now on. Oh, I'm sure of that, Mr. Doyle. Doctor, what's your opinion? I'm sorry, Sergeant, but I cannot be swayed by mass hysteria. But there were eyewitnesses who swear they saw him. Hallucinations. I'd have to see this so-called beast with my own eyes. After all, a scientist needs a platform of concrete facts before venturing an opinion, and overwhelming proof before stating a conclusion. Doctor, this is hardly the time for a lecture. You had Tony under your professional care. You were with him time and again. You were supposed to help him. As far as I know, I did. His behavior after I took the case proves that. Did you come across any hint, a clue? Do you reveal anything? I keep careful case histories of all my patients, but I don't need to tell you that's a matter of strict confidence between doctor and patient. Yes, I'm aware of that. However, we hoped you would cooperate, help us. Don't you think you're wasting a lot of valuable time interrogating me? After all, your duty is to try and find this, uh, this young man. Why do you shy away from the word? Everyone's using it. Werewolf. I do not subscribe to old wives' tales. It's my belief that these legends or myths passed out with the invention of electricity. After all, this is America, modern America, not a hamlet in the Carpathian Mountains. What do the Carpathian Mountains have to do with us? That's where the legend was born. The people there believe in werewolves. In the shadows of night, 
creep over their gloomy hills, the hungry dogs howl in the moonlight, the peasants cross themselves and hide in their huts. Any canine they see with sharp white teeth and glittering eyes they call a werewolf. Doctor, you seem to know a great deal about these myths. I amuse myself with fantasy. I live by facts. Hi, Peppy. You're in late tonight. Oh, Chris. Uh, would this teenage girl kill the same way? Yeah, same way. I told you. I knew. A werewolf. Tell me something, Peppy. In the old country, did they ever catch a werewolf? Never. Boyfriend ever give you any indications? Never, never. Do you realize that if this thing had come over him when he was with now, you? Now, there's no use upsetting our little girl any more than she is now. Sorry that you talked to her in the first place. Yes, I think that's enough. She's been crying ever since this thing happened. She must get more rest. Well, uh, just one more picture. Now, you're not going to let her go to school. Well, school's closed till this thing is over. Anyway, we'll protect her right here in our own home. You don't really believe that your son no, is we? No, I, I can't believe. What kind of a boy was Tony? Is Tony? He was always on the quiet side. Kept pretty much to himself. Maybe I should have remarried. A good woman around the house. The affection of a mother. A boy needs that. Especially when he's grown up. Not that Tony ever complained. I even asked him. Does he miss... Should I? He said, No, Dad. We'll get along all right. Just two of us. As if he knew no woman could ever replace his mother in my heart. Or in his... What I mean is, uh, did he always obey you? Yes. Only he hadn't know how to ask him. Ask him the right way and he'd do anything. Tony's a good boy. I don't care what they say. Tony's a good boy. Yet he hasn't come home or you haven't heard from him since he left for school early this morning. Now, certainly he must know how worried you are. Of course, you know what the principal and his teenage friends are saying about the terror, how it looked. Now, wouldn't this indicate to you that perhaps Tony's... Leave me the... alone, will you? Leave me alone. Pat, men are all ready. Oh, thanks. May seem like a long shot, Donovan, but if we can capture it before morning, save the community a lot of trouble and panic. You can try, but night in the woods is going to be tough. One thing in our favor, can't go very far. I can only travel on foot. Also, it's got to stop to rest and eat. Let's go. All right, now, we'll move in stagger fashion. We'll circle the outer edges first, and keep going round and round till we meet in the center. If you run across it, or even if you see any suspicious tracks, notify me immediately on the walkie-talkie. I don't fire unless you're attacked. I won't try to bring this thing in alive, if possible. Oh, another thing. When we get further in the woods, I want you to light the torches. Animals are afraid of fire. Maybe werewolves are, too. All right, let's go. Come on, Don.
Fine men, close up. We're going to light the torches. Hey, Ed, Charlie, take a couple of torches and go on up the hill there. Donovan, will you take a man and beat up this ravine? All right. All right, you go ahead. Donovan, did you see anything? There's a dog back up there he killed. Oh. Well, he's got to be in here someplace. No sense looking for him in this light, though. Well, look, Donovan, post guard so he can't possibly escape. We've got to get him. Tell him to give himself up. Tell him it's the best way. Advise him as his father to surrender. Hello? 
Thanks. Thanks. It's only the foreman. I'm not being docked for staying home tonight. Let's see if that matters. Let's see if anything can matter. If I only knew for sure he's still alive. If I only knew. Ripped off. How do you know it's his? Official description, he wore a jacket like this. Yeah, but how do you know that's part of his jacket? You know, I think we better call headquarters. Alfred, don't interrupt Hugo. Alfred, aren't you wasting your time? Or do you have a second victim in view? I'm not wasting my time, and I don't like to hear the subject of a world-shaking experiment referred to as a victim. Call him what you like, but he's being hunted down like a dangerous animal. And after he's captured... I'm not so sure he will be captured. The transformation into a werewolf is not all on the minor side. It also gives the subject the cunning of an animal. And you think somehow he will come here? All I have to do is wait. He must come here. I'm the only link he has left on his last hope. Next time, use a crosswalk. So one or more people aren't killed. Whoever he was, he, he hung up. 
You recognize his voice? I couldn't be sure. Look, miss, if you're trying to protect him by holding back anything, you're wrong. His best bet is to give himself up. Well, I only heard the word hello. How could I be sure? Sergeant Donovan. Where? Tenth and the Hudson. Thank you. Tenth and Hudson. What came in? Somebody just caught sight of him. Downtown? Makes sense. No trace of him in the woods and all the roads are blocked. Let's go, Chris. The results of the case of Mrs. Banks indicate that... I was expecting you. Come on in, Tony. Dr. Brennan, I know what I am. What I become. Help me, doctor, please! I know they're gonna kiss me, but don't let anyone see me like that! Please, doctor, help me! Please help me! Of course, Tony, of course. Come on over here. Alfred, I beg you. It's too late to bring the dead back to life. But at least you can help him. Help correct a terrible mistake. Mistake? You dare call a scientific triumph a mistake? What are you going to do now? He must make the voyage back once more. I must see with my own eyes and record with my own camera. Here, you'll be the witness. We'll have it all on film. From the time I first give him the injection through the transformation. And then no one will doubt my word. Even the most exacting, the most skeptical of scientists will be convinced that I have penetrated the deepest secrets of creation. That I've achieved the first perfect case of regression. friend you've got.
much we could do. We had to. Yeah. Did you see his face? I mean, before. I'll never forget it. But at least they'll see him this way now. What about him? I don't know. My hunch is the score was even. Boy, the newspapers will just eat this up. Yeah. But after they've had their field day, one thing will be clear. It's not for man to interfere in the ways of God. Thank you.